I'm asked this question about my book. My book is on Apple and it's absolutely free. It is not on Amazon, but uh, the book was written, written several years ago. It's kind of almost like a Q&A kind of book. Questions asked, questions answered. Anyhow, uh, I thought I would just let people know that uh, before I get into the video on how fast should water be going through the substrate in a plenum. A question that seems to be asked a lot is how fast should water be flowing through the plenum? And that's a very good question. This is one reason why when I made my plenums I use a 3 8 tube instead of the 1 inch tube. But if you're using the 1 inch tube or if you're using a 3 8 tube, usually the speed of how fast water flows through the plenum is going to be dictated by the pool water and permeability of the substrate of which you are using. So let's say if you're using sand, you could have the bubbler going a little faster than if you're using, like in my 90 gallon, the uh, larger substrate that they use for um, aquascaping for plants. That's going to be larger and it's going to maybe be, what, one to three millimeters in diameter compared to a grain of sand like that's in my uh, goldfish aquarium. So that's going to determine it. But there is a rule of thumb for both of them. And that is very easy. You want to pump, if you're going to use an air pump or whether you use a power head or whatever, you don't want to exceed about 40 gallons an hour. That's very slow. So, but the, the best that I have found is anywhere between 10 to 20 gallons an hour and no more through a plenum. But see, this would depend, of course, on the size of your tank. So if you're talking about a 75 gallon or my 90 gallon or a 40 gallon breeder, uh, you if you're pumping, let's say, 20 gallons an hour, that's fast enough. If you went 10 gallons an hour, that's fast enough too. It depends on, as you start reading your test kits, if you are starting to have nitrates being reduced. And this will tell you if you have your air pump or your power filter or your power head, I should say, going too fast. Just slow it down. That's one reason why I like the 3 8 is because you can actually watch the bubbles and count the bubbles very easily like they did in the old days. And see, this is something that in the old days, back when I mean the old days, I mean like in the 60s and when they had under gravel filters and they only used 3 8 tubing, maybe 6 inches long, and then you would build up your substrate to 3 to 4 inches or whatever, uh, you would have this bubbler and it could only pump so much water through the under gravel filter plate. And what we actually were doing is making an anoxic filter. But of course, as time went on, manufacturers changed that to one inch tubing instead of the little three eighths tubing. And things got all messed up because we were pumping more and more water through the under gravel filter plates. However, uh, using a plenum, a slow moving plenum, you would only want to pump anywhere between 5 to 40 gallons an hour through the plenum. And that, like I said, the bubbler may vary. Now, I wanted to show you some things that you can use because next question is asked, well, how big of a pump do I need, an air pump? Well, here's some very small air pumps that seem to be in use. Um, you can buy them on Amazon. 
You can buy them at aquarium co-ops. They're very inexpensive. This is about all you need for an air pump. You don't have to go out and buy a big air pump unless you're going to do uh, multiple tanks. And then why buy a lot of little pumps when one, uh, what, I, what I mean, instead of buying a lot of little pumps, because let's say you have 10 or 15 tanks set up, just buy one big pump and, sp and put it on a splitter. But in this case, if you have a little 5, 10, 15, 20 gallon, 30 gallon, 55 gallon, 90 gallon, one of these very small air pumps is more than enough, believe it or not. You don't need to move volumes and volumes of water through a plenum. The idea is to have the water move very slowly, but never became, become stagnated, okay? And by that time, the oxygen content has went so low to, as I explained in my videos, to do down to 0.5 parts per million, 0.3 parts per million. You know, this is extremely low. By then, the autotrophic bacteria are not even working because they don't really have enough oxygen, and therefore, the facultative bacteria start taking over in the anoxic conditions to finish up the nitrogen cycle and to complete denitrification. And like I explained, like they teach in wastewater management, how can you tell when oxygen has been depleted 100%? Well, you're going to start smelling hydrogen sulfide or your substrate's going to turn black. Now, even with BCB baskets or the bags, I have never opened one up and found blackening of the substrate, even in the very center. Okay, so we know then water is, is never being depleted 100%. And even as I explained to you in the video from the uh, college of which they teach waste management, even when water, uh, they say, has no oxygen, does it really have no oxygen? Well, no, it still has oxygen in the form of nitrates, phosphates, and nitrites, which the bacteria can utilize because they will not break down nitrates as long as there's available oxygen. So what we're trying to do is deplete that oxygen level down to 0.5 parts per million or even less so they start using the nitrate oxygen and then you'll have nitrogen left. And I, we've also noticed they will use the phosphate oxygen, which was proven by Dr. Franco in Italy. So, how fast should you run your plenum? Very slowly. Uh, I would say no more than 5 to 40 gallons per hour. And then you would have to watch your nitrates and see, and it may take a while to build up the bacteria, okay, like it did my, in my uh, goldfish aquarium. But, you know, in my goldfish aquarium, I tested for nitrates. It was zero. I'm using sand. But, of course, I use a 3 8 bubbler. But that's what you'll have to watch out for. Give it time. Do test. See if your nitrates are starting to go down. If they are, everything is set. If they still are not going down, you may have it running a little too fast. Slow it down. Because all you want to do is displace the water that's in the plenum and put it back into the aquarium, okay, so new water can replace it or slow movement will replace it. This is to prevent assimilatory denitrification from happening. So... Use a very small air pump. You can also use a power head. Now, power heads could be used. They, uh, let's say I found some power heads that only pump out 130 gallons per hour. You can, you know, usually they'll have a plus and minus. You put it on minus, the slowest it can go. If that's still too fast, then you can always put a cap over the outlet and then drill a small hole so the water 
you know, very little water would go through. That way, you're using a power head. It's not uh, making any bubble noise. You don't have to worry about airlines, uh, check valves, uh, uh, anything like that, and noise. So you could do it that way also by trying to make a slow-moving plenum. But it, it would be very easy to take a very slow power head. They're designed to fit over one-inch tubing. You cut your tubing down, put your power head on, put it on the slowest possible. Look at it. Looks too fast. Then start using something to slow it down on the outlet side. You're not going to hurt the pump. In fact, when an impeller on a magnetic pump like that, since it's a magnetic impeller, when you slow them down, you actually use less electricity. Yeah, you won't hurt the pump. But you will actually use less electricity because the impeller now will have resistance and go slower, and therefore it will use less electricity. So that's just a little uh, something that you can know, a little trick you can know. So you can use power heads, you can use bubblers, very small air pumps, very small power heads. The power heads will fit one inch. If you don't want a power head in your aquarium, then you would use the bubbler. If you decide to make a plenum without making it a slow-moving plenum, which you can, I would still put the airlift tube in, but you could always cap it off. It used to be they would sell you caps, but you could always cap it off. Uh, put a piece of sponge in it or something like that. And in the future, if you decide it's not working, um, like the uh, Chaubert method, which is not using any kind of airlift or mechanical means of moving water through. If you feel it's not working, then you can change it over with a bubbler without tearing down the complete aquarium. So that's it for this video. Very short, very sweet, right to the point. It's always asked of me, slow moving plenum. All you want to do is displace maybe like 10 gallons of water out of your plenum per hour and hopefully that as the water is passing through very slowly your aerobic bacteria will use up the oxygen doing their thing and then you will come into a part where your anoxing conditions exist and then they will start taking oxygen from what's available to the nitrates which are being sucked into the plenum you get it the water with nitrates and phosphates is being sucked into the plenum and you're allowing that bacteria then to utilize it for their oxygen needs as i've explained to you and the wastewater management systems of how they do it okay so I hope I made this real clear. And if there's a way you can measure how much water is going through your system, whether you're using sand or not, try, you know, try it or guesstimate. That's all I can tell you. So until, until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Happy fish keeping and thank you very much for watching my videos.